got it. Awesome. Okay, we are all set. Uh, perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, welcome everyone to our November mega class. For those of you who have never watched this class before live or you're watching it recorded for the first time, this is a collaborative cooking class that our rock stars team uh, does every single month. We've been doing this for almost two full years, you guys. Maybe three. Help me, Dana. I don't know, but it's awesome. We have new recipes to share with you, lots of tips and tricks along the way, and uh, some amazing uh, customer specials we share with you. And then at the very end, we do some giveaways. And so if you're on tonight live, you're going to get to participate in that. Uh, but stay on till the end and make sure that you put in the chat box your first and last name and who you are a guest of, because that is how we contact and find out where to send your gift to. So tonight, I'm excited. Um, if your consultant didn't already share with you, they will share with you a really fun recipe packet. So it's a little different than we normally do. This is a fun recipe packet that our um, home office team put together for us consultants to help us with our classes all on long. But we thought we would share the entire packet with you for a couple of reasons. One is because if there's any of you out there thinking about joining our team, you can see some of the awesome resources that we get from our home office. So that's exciting. You can also see mapped out that we've got some specials, some add-on specials um, in the month of November when you order one of our November customer specials. So I'm going to cover all these specials at the end. We're highlighting our recipes to match these specials. Okay, that's exciting. But for the first 10 days of November, anyone that buys a customer special, so you can buy the $40 one, the $45 one, the $89 special, any special, you can add on our 14th mini muffin tray for only $50. And it's normally 66, so that's exciting. And then we have another add-on gift from November 12th to the 19th and another add-on gift from November 20th to the 30th. Why am I telling you that now? Because I want you guys to think about hosting your own class, whether it's virtually or in person with your consultant. So um, the other cool thing about this front page is to give you some ideas for some flavor combinations to really maximize the recipes that are in here as well. So um, if you didn't receive that yet, reach out to your consultant and they have that to give you, okay? So I am up first with a recipe I've been making for a very, very long time. And I made these long before we had our own line of French pantry jams. And these are our brie and jam tartlets, okay? Super easy to make with our tartlet tray and a roll pot, of course. So we have three different roll pots, you guys. This is our graduated roll pot that shows the markings. So when you want to get a certain size circle or a certain length of, like I'm making cinnamon rolls or something, I want to make sure I get the right size and cut them evenly. So it really works well for those types of tasks in the kitchen. So the cool thing about any of our roll pots is that the dough is not going to stick to your surface, but the roll pot does stick to the counter. So when you're sliding around, it's not sliding all over the place, right? We've all had those once upon a time. So I'm going to take my store-bought pie dough um, I do not work for Pillsbury, but I will tell you that Pillsbury has the easiest pie dough to work with. And I will tell you, if you're fortunate enough to have a Trader Joe's, Trader Joe's has the best, most homemade like pie dough, store about pie dough. A little trickier to work with, but with, with our tools, it's easy um, to do. So just know those two little tips for you. Okay, so we have an amazing Beechwood rolling pin. And I love this rolling pin. A lot of people are not familiar with a rolling pin that doesn't have candles. And I love it because then I can apply the pressure where I most need the pressure to roll my dough thin enough. The biggest mistake that people make when making tartlets, and especially the brie and jam tartlets, is they don't get their dough thin enough, okay? If you want to make sure that your pastry crust is cooked all the way and has a nice little crispiness to it, and your toppings are not overcooked, then you've got to make sure that your dough is thin enough. So I'm going to tell you the best tip that's going to help you, you guys, is if you can see any of your roll pot leathering. So with the graduated roll pot, we have lots of markings on it. But with our other square roll pot and rectangular roll pot, you will see the lettering down here that just says roll pot. And if you can see through your dough, then you know that you have gotten it thin enough. So I'm gonna hold this up so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So it was already a circle and then I rolled it thin enough so you can see the lines through there, okay? So then 
I only have one of our four teas mini muffin trays because it's a new product for all of us. So I'm going to show you the magic of TV and how it's done too. But we have these fluted round cutter set. Love, love, love these. And for this mini tartlet tray, I'm using the fifth one in. Now you could go with the sixth one if you want more of an edge around your tartlet. You play with it, okay? But I'm going to use the fifth one in. So then the cool thing is, is you go around and you cut out all of your shapes. One store-bought pie dough round is going to fill your mini tartlet tray completely and you're gonna have a little dough left over. So I'm going to go ahead, you can see you cut out all these shapes and I'm gonna show you the coolest thing when we get all of them cut out, I'm kind of rushing. I normally do them, you know, pretty meticulously close together, but I'm rushing because I want to show you something fun and get to the finished product. So cake server knife. I rarely use this to cut neck knife. It's like a, a I want to say a multi-purpose tool for the kitchen, but I love it to go underneath my pie dough and help lift it. But then you can see how this doesn't stick. How cool is that? Well, another really important tip, you guys, is don't ball this dough up. I know it's tempting. Many of us had mothers that taught us to ball it all up. But guess what happens then? You overwork the pie dough. And that's when your dough shrinks up. You don't want that, okay? So now we have all our little shapes that we're going to put in our tartlet tray. So I got to remove some of them first. So here's our gorgeous finished product. I want to tell you a little tip, you guys. I always like to use the, the medium baking sheet that this tray fits perfectly, but currently those are out of stock. And my friend Cecile said, well, th listen, Teresa, it's actually easier to use the large because look, there's more room for my hands to touch the baking sheet and not touch my tartlets, which is cool. And it fits it exactly. Then when you're pulling out every once in a while, you get the thumb or the hot pad in the tartlet tray. So I like that there is a little bit more wiggle room with the large baking sheet. So little tip from my friend Cecile. So I made these and I'm gonna show you how I fill them, but we've got uh, three different flavors here. So I did our strawberry champagne jam and I did our apricot almond jam, yum yum. And I did our raspberry violet jam. Don't worry, I'm gonna hold these up and finish product to you but I just wanna pull them out so that you can see me make these tartlets too. So I'm just gonna pull a couple of these ones out and then you can see how easily they come out and look how gorgeous they, those are. These little bite-sized brie and jam. Um, perfect when you're doing a big event. I will tell you that I had a big open house in my house this weekend and we made, my friend Meredith made all kinds of tartlets. I was so grateful for her help, but she did the brie and jam and we took there's two Costco dips right now that I love. One is a cranberry jalapeno, amazing, great, only available the holidays, and then an artificial jalapeno, super yummy, and they also make a great filling for a tartlet. Um, but look at how pretty those are, and then they're just so easy to serve at a party because people can just pick them up one at a time. So, and I just drop them on the floor. Yes, I love that. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so let me show you how you do this. So you're gonna take your little tartlet shape that I already cut with my cutter, and I like to just put them all in the tray first and then go through after I've set them over the well of the mini tartlet tray. And then I take my little shaper tool and I'm just gonna press it in and create the little well of the tartlet, which is pretty cool. So then what I have learned with four T's and it's a new product line for us. So those of you that are familiar with FlexiPan or FlexiPad or Silform, you keep asking me, What's the difference? What's the difference? Well, I'm going to tell you what the difference is. And I'm also going to tell you that it has been a learning curve for me. So if you're like trying to figure out a recipe that worked one way and FlexiPan is now working different in four T's, don't get frustrated. You're not alone. We're here to help you. Okay. But the four T's product line is featuring your forte made easy. That's why it's called four T's. And it is really a marriage of two different product lines. So what I want to show you is here's Flexi Pan. For those of you that know Flexi Pan, super floppy, right? Doesn't have any stability to it. You put it on the baking sheet and then it gets some stability, but still very floppy. Taking that in and out of the microwave, people are always a little bit nervous, even out of the oven. So very, very flexible. Yes, this was perfect product for a baker, especially a professional baker. That's what 
FlexiPan was designed for, for professional bakers. So if I'm doing a cheesecake, yeah, it's really nice and easy to roll that side down, right? But if I'm gonna roast the chicken, then um, it definitely is not up to speed for that, as well as let's say our Flexi Pat, which came after Flexi Pan. I know it's confusing. Flexi Pan, Flexi Pat. So Flexi Pat, you guys know, got our nine by 13, a little more sturdy, but it's a little too sturdy. So hard to roll down the edges and get what you want to do with it. So what does Fortis do? Fortis is now our new iPhones or Dana would say Androids, but like you think about you go from the telephone with the cord, with the dial that you have to, you know, spin around to then you go to, you know, a cordless phone, then you go to a flip phone and we eventually get here. So here's our new technology. Here's our new uh, 2023 technology of flexible bakeware. So this is a large round mold for T's and it's the perfect one for me to show you that it is more sturdy than flexi pan but more flexible than flexi pat, okay? Still made of platinum silicone, and it is still gonna be meet all the safety standards that we've known to love, that all European and the US standards, and it also is going to hold up in the dishwasher way better than this one, so that's exciting. So, uh, hope that helps you guys understand 4Ts. I've had a lot of people ask me that question, and so I just wanna make sure you guys understand that. So back to my four T's tartlet tray. What I did with this, you guys, is I put the pie dough in here. I found when I baked the brie and jam that my dough was, it wasn't cooking at the same fast enough like it was in my silkworm. That makes sense if you know silkworm. So what I've decided I need to do is pre-bake the shell. So I take a little fork so that the dough doesn't shrink too much and just very gently prick some holes in my dough. I bake that at 400 degrees for five minutes. Then when it comes out of the oven, then I'm gonna put my little piece of brie in there. Now, I love to get the Costco brie, very affordable and large quantities. So I'm just gonna, again, use my cake server knife to cut my little piece of brie that can go in the, just fit the bottom of it. You don't wanna overfill it, it just becomes messy. And then I love to top with our jams. I love our little jar spoons to get the perfect amount of jam. The other big tip I'm gonna give you is less jam than brie, okay? People that pour on the jam really heavy and then they have a bubbling mess in their oven and you just, the, the balance of it is less jam than brie. So I'm using my little spice spoon, jar spoon, sorry we used to call them spice spoon, jar spoon, to just put a little dollop of that brie on, of the jam on top of the brie. And then I'm gonna put that back in the oven, 400 degrees, seven minutes, okay? So the total cooking time is 400 degrees, 12 minutes, which we did put in the recipe that we shared with you guys. Understand, every oven is a little bit different. If your oven runs hot, then turn it down a little bit. If your oven runs low, turn it up a little bit. So some people like to do these tartlets at 425. I like to do them at 400. So. Okay, I know that that was long and drawn out, but I hope that you guys uh, learned a lot in what I shared with you, you there. And now I'm gonna pass it off to my friend, Debbie, who's got another really great recipe for you that hopefully you will enjoy and be able to serve through these holiday months with your family and friends. Awesome, thank you, Teresa. That's that's a lot of exciting information. And I do love, love, love the four T's on. It's so, it's just the best. Um, I'm actually doing a recipe tonight that I've never done until just now. So usually before um, presenting, I like to kind of have a little trial run, but Teresa said it's so easy. You don't need a trial run. Um, so I am doing mashed potatoes in minutes. And I don't mean the ones that you boil the water and you pour the flakes in and you stir it up. And I'm, I'm actually using real potatoes, Yukon gold. Um, Normally, always, until tonight, I always do my potatoes like this, don't you? Um, you have to dice them up, cover them with water, put them to boil, and what happens sometimes, boiling over, you end up with all the starch on the side. And just out of curiosity, what I love, love, love about using the Forties um, large mold 
is that when I do the vegetables, I've never done potatoes, but broccoli, um, I found that, you know how they say you always boil in the water like this, you always boil your vitamins out. So with potatoes, you have iron, you have magnesium, you have vitamin C, and you have um, B6. So here's what the recipe is called. Um, you have two to three um, pounds of red potatoes. I actually used um, 10 Yukon. Um, and then you put them in whole and cook them in the Fortis with the bottom mat for 10 minutes. Now, the whole part totally scared me because... I'm thinking now, you, I have to always cut them up to boil them. So I never put them in because they take so long, you have to cut them up. So how is 10 minutes in the microwave hole going to work? Well, it really worked. Um, I put 10, I put 10 potatoes for 10 minutes, just like this with the bond map. So here we go. Let's see what happened. My first time ever, y'all. Okay. There's all the potatoes. You're gonna, we're gonna see if they're pork tender. They are, oh my gosh. Okay, so let's mash them up. Wow, oh my gosh. Y'all are gonna believe this. I mean, they are just mashing. Y'all, I'm sorry, I'm so excited. This is how you're gonna feel your first time. Um, so I'm just mashing these around. I just lost a little bit. I got a casualty on the on the raw mat. But oh my gosh, y'all! I hate this masher. Does your masher do that? Yeah, I see Dana saying yes. Oh, I can't stand this, but we all have them. I just learned tonight that we have a we have our own um, potato masher. So that's exciting. Um, I'm going to be ordering it tonight. Um, so it calls for one to four tablespoons of butter, y'all, four, you know it's four. Um, and then I, um, I'm going to add a little bit of the basil parmesan um, of our, because y'all have like this amazing, it's got five different flavors of salt. And the basil parmesan is absolutely amazing. And then we have our pep rally. And tonight um, I'm going to use Vietnam, but usually I'm so hung up on Madagascar, but I'm going to use Vietnam tonight. There we go. I didn't know this. There we go. Mm, it smells so amazing. And you can play with your French pantry items. Um, we have so many amazing, um, just fragrant herbs. Um, and But tonight I'm going to add a little bit of roasted garlic and chive. My husband loves um, garlic mashed potatoes. So I'm going to add a little bit of that. And then I'm going to add a little bit of milk and just see what happens. So I'm going to take, take my old masher and just mash it around and see how it looks. And you can just play with it. You're going to, if you're not Southern, this is going to be weird to you. But I actually also add this to my potatoes. Is that crazy or what? My daughter earlier, I was telling her I was making potatoes. She said, make sure that you tell them that we use mayonnaise. And I'm like, oh my gosh, if they're not from the South, they might not do that. You could add cream cheese, um, but we also use Duke's mayonnaise. So anyway, oh my gosh, y'all should smell this. And it's no work at all. No work except for that. Okay, let me show you. Stir it around. Look at that, y'all. Mashed potatoes in 10 minutes. Real potatoes, not the instant ones. And thank you for letting me present. Um, Teresa's going to show you that masher I'm going to get as soon as we hang up tonight. Okay. You guys see this? I had to switch uh, cameras so that I could share the specials with you. But this <laughs> masher, you guys, is amazing. And so this is uh, something we carry at Bon Cook that if you don't own, you're going to want to get it. And maybe somebody will get one tonight. We'll see. So I'm going to pass it off to my friend Dana next. Dana, are you ready? I'm ready. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for joining me. I have the pleasure to share with you apple pie bites. 
So mm -hmm. the reason we're sharing this today in our mini muffin tray, as like Teresa said, we have add-ons to our specials. So she's going to go over all that with you at the end. And, but but further ado, ado, apple pie bites. Apple pie bites. And for some and reason, I'm having a little feedback issue. Maybe not, maybe, okay. Um, okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep my apple pie seasoning. Now, of course, I had somebody ask me if you can use pumpkin pie spice. Now, the difference between apple pie spice and pumpkin spice, pie spice, say that 10 times fast, is your pumpkin spice latte will have more of the ginger tones, um, clove than allspice. And for pumpkin pie, I mean, sometimes I only use cinnamon, but if I really want to zhuzh it up a little bit, then I will make my own apple pie spice. And that is two parts of cinnamon. So in this case, I did two, a teaspoon, one part nutmeg, so a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and one part of cardamom. And I love cardamom. It has that perfumey quality that people are just like, what is in that? So that's your little apple pie spice. I'm going to use my mini whisk to whisk that up. You know, the spices kind of want to clump together. And then I'm going to take part of it, half of that. And I'm going to add a quarter cup of brown sugar. And then I'll use that mini whisk again to break up the brown sugar and make sure that it's all incorporated with those yummy spices. Now, I love this recipe because you can customize it to whatever your family likes. Yes, we are making apple pie bites. We're using our crescent dough, thank you Pillsbury, but you could use any kind of pie filling you want. I know Teresa and I love the um, Cherry Republic, cherry pie filling from Michigan. Um, you could use, um, if you don't wanna use the um, crescent dough, you could use puff pastry, but it's super fun. I'm gonna do it in the mini muffin tray like we talked about, but we have a flash sale that dropped today you could totally use this mini um, loaf tray to do your pumpkin pie bites too. So I wanted to make sure we showed that. So we've got our spice mix all ready to go. I've melted my butter already. So I always, whenever you use your Bond Cook products in the microwave, you always want them on a microwave safe plate, usually covered with your octagonal Bond mat as your lid so it doesn't splatter. So this is just my, you know, one of my salad plates to my regular dishes, and I've melted my butter in that bowl, and it's just waiting patiently. Next, I am on my roll pat. As you can see, I'm on this graduated roll pat. Right now, I'm using it to anchor my cutting board. So safe. I'm going to use the best knife. If you need a great knife for your Thanksgiving prep, reach out to the consultant who invited you tonight. This is our Santoku chef knife and our awesome CEO, Cindy. I think she went through like 25 knives to find this. It also has a lifetime guarantee, which is awesome. So I pre-peeled my apple. You wouldn't even need to peel the apple if you didn't want to, but I am going to just prepare it to use our eco chop. Now you're gonna see me chop this apple lickety split in our eco chop, but the eco chop will be the best little tool that you can have for your Thanksgiving meal prep. Chop all those carrots and celery for your stuffing. Of course, reach out to the consultant who invited you for the cranberry salsa recipe. It's a keeper and we keep, you know, you can't find cranberries, at least where I live, all year round. So I throw a bunch of bags in the um, freezer so that we can have cranberry salsa all year round. We do it all in the Eco Chop. So Eco Chop, really quick. <laughs> It's your little arm workout. It's your little workhorse in the kitchen. And I am going to do these kind of a rough um, chop. So I'm only gonna pull it five times and that will make half inch apple chunks. Okay, so in I go, I'll do like half the apple. And here we go, it's a little bit loud as we talked about, but you do get your arm workout so you can skip arm day. Ready, go. So it's five, five, four, five pulls. And this is what your apples look like after five pulls. I'm gonna to toss them into my stainless mixing bowl. And then I'll do the other half the apple. Oh my gosh, love a Granny Smith apple. So good. And that, that spice blend smells so good. All right, let's put the rest of the apple in here. Do five more pulls. One, two, three. And that was done lickety split, no cutting board needed. And in that goes, of course, I'm using one of our mini spatulas. They come in a set of two. 
perfect for scraping all the apple out of your eco chop and so many other things. To the apples, I'm going to add, this is three tablespoons of butter that I melted. I'm gonna add about two tablespoons and keep about a tablespoon left over to brush the tops. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and stir. Now the recipe calls for doing a layer of the spice blend and then the apples on top. You could totally add the spices to your apples if you wanted to, but the hubs and I did a little taste test earlier and we agreed we liked that layer. So there you go. All right, so next I'm going to unroll and I'll try not to squeal. Do you ever squeal like when it pops open, a popping fresh dough? Um, I'll try not to squeal into the camera, but we'll see. Um, and I like to hit it on the counter squeal free and then you just put it out on your roll pad like i said if you would rather use your um puff paste you could next i'm going to use my cake server knife did you know it comes in black and white so fun not just for serving cakes and you don't even need to use your rolling pin here because it's pre-rolled and it's pre-scored so it's easy easy now this recipe makes eight um, but you could double, triple, quadruple for a crowd. And I'm just kind of unrolling it and spreading it out like so. And then I'm going to go over it, the serrated areas with the serrated part of my cake server knife to make eight triangles. So basically we're, we're kind of making a little apple croissant. Muffin, had a baby, love baby. Okay, so I'm going to use our four teas mini muffin tray. And here's the peak, sneak peek. And I loved um, that Vaughn tip of using it on the large baking sheet so you have your little handles. I'm just loving that. So I'm going to take, I'm just going to do a couple of these and then I'll show you the finished product. Um, but they're really easy to make. So you're going to take your triangle, right? And I'm going to adjust my, see how easy it will just lift off of your counter and it will turn it this way because I really want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm turning it this way and bringing this over. So we have our little triangle of dough, right? We're gonna place it, I place it right in the middle of the middle. So you push down, you could use your shaper tool here, you could use the back of the spoon here. I like to use my fingers. Ina Garten always says, clean hands are one of your best kitchen tools. And so I like to kind of line it a little bit. I don't really pull it up the sides, but I'm kind of, you know, making the well nice and deep. Now, yes, you could use this loaf mold, right? The mini loaf and do it that way, so fun. So then let's do one more triangle. So easy, right? And sometimes I like to alternate just to give yourself a little room. So if you're just doing the eight, you have plenty of room in this tray. So just push it down and make a little cup. So we've got two there, just like that. Easy peasy, right? Now we're gonna take that spice blend slash brown sugar mixture. I'm going to take one teaspoon and put it in the bottom of each well. One teaspoon, it sounds like a lot, but it kind of melts into the dough so nicely. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is you have two choices. You can either use one of these little scoops, a one tablespoon scoop. Let me move this over, wrap quick. Two options. If you have a nice tablespoon, you can reach in and get a couple tablespoons. What I did with the ones that I finished is I put actually, I loaded them up with two tablespoons of apples. So they came out like an actual muffin shape. So one in there, push it down with the back and I'm gonna mound up a second one, just like so. Just, I mean, I really mound it up like that. See that? Woo, lots of good apple, right? and it's coated in the butter. So let's do it with the second one. One, push it down with the top, and a second, like so. And then all you do is you're gonna kind of make a little croissant muffin. So you take the long side, pull it over the top, like so. Take the pointed side, fold it this way, and tuck it down underneath. Then you're going to take the little wings that would have been the croissant, right? And wrap it around towards the point of the, the crescent. So it's going to look like this. So you do a little wrap just like so. And then there are openings already because you folded it. You don't need to prick it or anything to vent. It will vent beautifully. So large side over. 
I do kind of pull it over to cover. Tip goes this way and tucks in. And then these little wings go around towards the tip. Just like that. See how they kind of just look like cute little, almost rosettes in a way. Then I'm going to take my pastry brush. Love our pastry brush and the rest of the butter. And I'm just going to use it in here. If you have this mini cake mold from the prior, prior line, you're loving it. If not, you can just melt your butter in a regular bowl. But I'm going to brush butter all over the top. And of course, it makes eight. So we would do all eight. And then I'm going to take, at this point, I like to take, you could either do, you know, a little bit of your leftover spice mixture, but I like to choose the spice, spice mixture that has the brown sugar. And I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit on top because that brown sugar and spices will just look so gorgeous on there. So there you go. That's the mop. So this, my friends, is what they look like going in. And this is what they look like coming out. These are, so preheat your oven to 375. But these baked in my oven for 12 minutes. The recipe calls for 12 to 15. But then to unmold, of course, as you all know, with something like this where we're not going to serve it inverted, we're going to serve it like this. You can grab your bamboo rectangular serving board. We have a few of these left on our website. So definitely if any products that you've seen tonight, reach out to the consultant who invited you and get your order in right away so you can have it in time for Thanksgiving. But let's just pop these out from the bottom and look at how gorgeous those are. So cute, right? Golden brown. You can see that the apple got real juicy and caramelized and then you just pop them out. Of course, there's one missing like I talked about. But look how pretty those are. And they are just chock full of apples, which I love. Don't you hate it when you like make the big pump, uh, apple pie and you filled it all and then the apples sink and you have like the crust and it's like this far away from the apples? That does not happen here. So there you have it. Look how beautiful those are on our little tray. And you can serve them warm with maybe a little scoop of ice cream on top. These will be so good in the morning with coffee. And really try, you know, the different types of pie fillings. Um, and try them with puff pastry and let us know how they turn out. So if you're wanting these recipes, definitely reach out to the, consult the consultant that invited you because this month, it's more than just the three recipes that we usually give you that we show you. You get a complete packet. I think, Teresa, is it 12 recipes? So everything great for your um, Thanksgiving table. And one quick thing, I did, I wanted to, been wanting to share this. So I had my oven serviced last week and I got a couple tips from the oven guide that I'd love to share going into all this holiday baking. So um, a lot of times if you're working with a new oven, they are set to buzz preheat after like 10 or 15 minutes. It doesn't even matter what temperature is in that oven, but it like dings that it's preheated. So I was realizing that my oven was running really cold. So what he's told me to do was, it did get fixed, there was another issue, but he said regarding preheating, Always preheat your oven for at least 30 minutes before you're going to use it. And sometime in that 30 minute period, just open it and close it because that gets the circulation of air and it gets those walls heated to the temperature that you need it to be versus like the heat just around the probe. So those are my two oven tips for you. And with that, I'll kick it back to Teresa and I uh, can't wait yeah. to see you guys next month. Thank you, Dana. Some great tips. Don't turn your video off yet because somebody asked if you could cut one of those open to show the inside. Yeah. Good. So you can do that. That'd be awesome. And then while you're doing that, um, somebody also asked, the recipe makes eight. Do you have to put water in the well of the muffin cups before you put them in the oven? And I will tell you that my experience with that has been um, if you are filling, you know, two thirds to three fourths of the tray full, don't worry about a few empty wells. But if you're going a recipe and you're only filling two of the wells, then definitely put a little water in them. Um, it's just be smarter to keep your pan safe. Those look awesome, Dana. So, do you see how you have that layer of spice at the bottom? It's yeah. so good and it gets nice and airy pillowy. And of course, that dough is so easy to work with and so yummy. So I guess oh I have to. It looks awesome. Thank you for sharing. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So um, 
sorry, it's like right in front of my face, but I have to touch my computer. So, um, okay. So thank you to those presenters. Yes. We've got those recipe packets for you. All those recipes, 12 recipes, amazing. And so try those all out, but book a cooking class with your consultant this month. You can do it virtual like this and get your friends together, or you can do it in person, talk to your consultant and she will help you. Okay. So I am going to share with you some great specials we've got going on um, this month. So bear with me. I'm going to start first with my favorite, which is our bomb business starter. And so we, do you guys see, like we have a ton of fun, right? And we all are learning from each other all the time. And so I love that. I love the tips that are exchanged um, across our team and our company. And so if you want to be a part of that, then we would love to invite you to be a part of it. And so uh, don't feel like you have to do the business like I do the business or Dana does the business or Debbie does the business. You can do the business however you want, which can mean just your own personal discount. It can mean sharing with family and friends. I always say part-time full-time or fun time, we've got a place for you on our Rockstar team. So for $75, you can join this amazing team, you guys. Um, it's a great time of year to do so. Everybody is looking for all those tips and tricks and great products in their kitchen. And lots of you are looking for these new products, which is exciting. So look what you can get for $75. Amazing deal. But the best part is not what comes in the box, but what comes after. And that is this amazing collaboration um, that we have on our team and in our company. So if you want to get a little bit more than what comes in that $75 bundle, you can look at upgrading um, and in selecting a business kit with the French pantry, which is kind of exciting. So for $99, you can add on these six different French pantry items, which is great. And then if you really want to knock it out and get this awesome new meal prep collection to go with your bomb business starter, then you could do the 169 business kit. They're all amazing. I like to tell people joining our team to do the $75 kit, and then we will show you how you can earn all the other things for free. So if you're interested in learning more information about that, then please reach out to the consultant that invited you and he or she will give you more information on that. Okay, if you're not interested in joining this amazing team, I don't know why you wouldn't, um, then I want to see you. Oh, I got to find my right screen so I can see what I'm showing you. Okay, so here's the host reward. So like we talked about, we have this amazing packet of recipes, add-on gifts, lots of specials for your guests um, to come and lots of value for your guests when you host a class. But the really cool thing is, is you also get free and half off product and bonus gift. Look at this amazing in our Bon Cook vault, this flexi pan that no one can get right now, but you can get it for free when you have an $800 class. I love the tree mold. It is so fun to have in the holidays and it's become quite a tradition for my family and my friends. So you can see different levels, you get different rewards, and we always strive and are pretty successful at getting all of our hosts to this Bon Elite level because we rock stars know how to do it. So reach out to your consultant to know his or her open dates and start planning your class for November. Okay, so you just want to shop. And we love when you shop too. So you can shop tonight. You can shop anytime. Uh, but I want to show you these awesome specials. And I want you to remember what I said. You buy any one of these specials and you can add on the mini muffin tray for only $50. Okay, so think about yourself. Think about people you have to give gifts to and understand that. So this is really fun. So this small bite delight goes perfectly with what I shared with you tonight, right? So you can do sweet or savory. Everyone loves a handheld treat. Now, the mini tartlet tray and the round cutters are a must. And then you get your choice of one French pantry jam. We all have our different favorites. I got to say, it's so hard when somebody says, what's your favorite? Um, but I would say my most used is the apricot almond and probably the strawberry champagne. But they're all amazing and they make these amazing tartlets. Another thing that you can do, you guys, if you have several of these jams at home um, or you decide to buy all of them, you can make the brie tartlet without the jam and then have your guests add it as a little taster and then kind of um, put their favorite jams on there. So that's kind of fun too. So $89, the value in this is 103. So great savings there for sure. And then of course, remember the add-on mini muffin 
um, for the next couple of days. And then we have a different add on coming later. So then we've got serving up sides. This was awesome. I would say my favorite is this large round mold. I love this guy. Um, this is one that I'm telling all my customers, including my mom who ordered last night, um, that is, I like this new four T's large round mold better than the previous large round mold. Um, and it's a good one. It's amazing. And so it is a great deal. Normally $46 by itself. And in the month of November, you can get the large round mold or the square mold. And then you get your choice of one of these three spatulas. They're all amazing. I have multiples of them. They're great uh, for $45. Regular value of that would be 61. So great savings there. And then thankful for flavor. I just bought some of these for myself last night because I needed to stock up on, I'm always running out of jams and I needed some mustard and I am loving our meat, our chicken, meat and fish herb blends. These are really popular. And so for $40, you get your choice of one jam, your choice of available mustard and choice of either the meat the chicken or the fish herb blend. They're amazing, you guys. So super excited. We also have a flash sale that is good for two more days. And I'm going to pull that up for you as well. Dana um, mentioned the mini loaf. And so I've got too many screens here. So let me see if I can move this one. It's always hard when they get buried and then I can't see if I've got it centered for you guys or not. So I'm just going to, oh, there it is. Found it. Nope, that's not it. Sorry, guys. There it is. Okay, Merry Minis. So this is our mini loaf tray and then your choice of chicken or meat or blend, okay? So um, the, you've got some fun stuffing cups. These would be great for the um, Thanksgiving holiday coming up. And we're just having so much fun with the chicken and meat. And I'm using both the chicken and the meat also on pork, which is fun and just kind of mixing it up. I did some meatballs the other day and I just, the flavor profile, I decided to put the chicken herb blend with my beef and pork meatballs. And it was so fabulous. And so you can totally play with this, but it's meant to be simple for you guys to put the chicken or blend on chicken and the meat on meat and the fish on fish. Isn't that amazing? But great flavors. And these are salt-free for those of you who don't know. So you add your salt, which means another layer of flavor with our flavored salt, which is awesome. Um, and if you have to watch your salt intake, it's really great because you can control that too. So awesome. So this special regularly price would be $81 and through Wednesday, November 8th, you can get it for only 65. So be thinking about all those specials. So, okay. So I think it's time for some giveaways unless we have any questions. Let me double check because I think I got everybody in here. Just double check in and I did. Okay, awesome. So, um, so what we decided that we're going to be giving away tonight is very important to give away a masher because with the holidays coming up, I use my masher not just for mashed potatoes or smashed potatoes, but I also use this to make homemade pie dough, you guys. It is incredible. Goes in the dishwasher, super durable, cleans right up. Oh, the other thing I use this for is I'm going to do ground beef and I'm like ground beef or ground chicken. I do that in my large round mold in the microwave and then I break it all up with this as well. So everyone um, that I've shown this to in the last week has bought it. So, so one of you lucky winners is going to get this. And then the other lucky winner is going to get one of our uh, flavor profile sets. You get to pick um, that food bundle for the month of um, whatever we're in, November. Okay, so I am going to say, we always say the first name that is drawn, then you get to pick your prize. So be listening for your name. And here we go. I'm going to spin the wheel. I've got everybody in here. So it's spinning, spinning, spinning. And let's see who's going to win first. Tammy Doyle, you're a regular on here. You deserve to win. That's exciting. So Tammy, can you please let us know, would you like the masher or the food bundle for this month? And I'm going to spin my next winner while we wait to hear from Tammy and Dana, maybe you want to pick for Tammy. So drum roll, Tammy, let us know. Spinning for our second winner now. Denise. Okay. I think that that is also a customer of Dana's and I didn't get your last name, Denise, but um, I might be wrong, but I'm Denise. Um, so Tammy, will you let us know? I don't see her on here. Maybe she's signed off. Okay. We'll figure it out. Um, I haven't heard from Tammy. So Denise, do you have a preference? Would you like the food bundle or the masher? 
Denise wants the masher. Okay, the masher is yours, Denise. And then Tammy will get that food bundle. So thank you everybody for joining us. And oh my gosh, I can't wait for our December mega class. Uh, we do not have the date set yet. So make sure to ask your consultant for that. But we'll get that out to you guys as soon as we can get that nailed down. Obviously, it's a collective effort. And so, but we always have a really fun mega class in December too. So if you are on our Rockstars team, we are immediately moving into our team meeting. And if anybody wants to be a fly on the wall and see what we do at a monthly team meeting, feel free to stay on and be a fly on the wall. We have no problem with guests on our team meeting, but I am going to um, resist the urge to accidentally hang up on everybody. I am going to try and stop the recording. Uh, stop recording. There we go. Okay. So I stopped the recording.